So I'm going to come back to a question I had about word problems while we're waiting for some more to come in. Um, obviously, word problems come in all shapes and sizes, so I can't give you a single key to answering all of them, but I can give you a few tips, a few hints about how to approach them to make sure you are you know, giving yourself the best chance to answer them. First things first is um, write stuff down slash draw pictures. So a lot of times students try to do too much in their head. They're very bright. I'm sure they can do a lot in their head. But for, for this test, if you're going for a top score and you, you are like 95% accurate in your head, that will be enough to keep you from maybe you have 1,500 in many cases. So you want to do as much work on paper as possible. And in word problems, what that usually means is read each sentence chunk by chunk. And as you're reading each sentence, copy the relevant information down on the page. And what that lets you do is kind of process it step by step, organize the information in a way that makes more sense to you rather than relying on the way they're presenting it and giving you the momentum to at least find what's the next step. If I can find the next step, then maybe I can find the next step. And if I can find that step, then maybe I can find the next step and so on. So write stuff down. Don't just sit there staring at it. It's not, you're just not going to get anywhere. I mean, a lot of times you might, but your best chance is writing things down. Even if you're just copying the information in the problem and just putting it on the paper, it's better than just looking at it. And that could stimulate some ideas, stimulate what the next step might be. Um, second thing, use the choices. So the choices, especially if it's a question where you have to come up with, with an equation or function, the choices can give you hints as to what you're supposed to do. The form of the equations, what they have in common, what they don't, right? What do they all have or what do they mostly share versus what are the big differences between them? What numbers are they including or not? How, what variables are they including or not? If it's an inequality problem, how are the inequality signs arranged and so on. The choices can give you hints. So the way I kind of describe this is you come at the question from two ends. On the one hand, you're reading the problem, writing it down, trying to generate an answer the normal way, but you also have an eye on the choices and you, you use process of elimination to help you sort of narrow down and find the best answer that works for you um, and give you some ideas about how to get the answer. So use those choices. Um, they're there, especially for, you know, unless it's a grinning question, but the choices are there for your benefit. So use them to help you figure out what the next steps might be. Um, let's think if there's any other tips. Obviously, these are very broad. It depends on the question. But you know, focus on the next step. Of course, we want to get to the answer. But getting to the answer might require a number of moves. And it could be that the difficult part of the problem is not necessarily getting the final answer. It's getting one particular step in the process. Um, you can imagine if there's a problem, here's the sort of starting point, and here's the answer. So maybe we'll do this kind of question and answer. There's a number of steps that you might have to take to get you from one to the other. And yes, we need to get to the answer, but often the step to get to the answer, like the very last step, is usually one of the easier steps. Like that's not really the hard thing. It's somewhere in here, there's a step that's sort of the, the linchpin, the most important step that's going to really define the problem. And so, you know, if we kind of represent this, maybe that step's not too bad, that step's easy, that step's easy, that step's not bad. But then there's a step in there that's really tricky, that takes a lot of time. And you know, this is the step that matters, right? That's the step that's gonna define the problem because the rest of the steps are pretty easy. So what you need to do is instead of trying to go boom in one jump, what's the question, what's the answer? Let me have this idea of how to solve this thing in one big jump, that's gonna be pretty hard to do. Not least of which because there's so many steps, but also because this hard step is really the hard part of the problem. So what you wanna do is take it bit by bit. What's the next step? What's the next step? What's the next step? What's tricky about this, and I think what throws people off, is you know we take that first step, we take another step, we take another step, but we don't really know 
necessarily if that's going in the right direction. So sometimes you have to proceed step by step with a sort of posture of faith to say, I don't know if this is going to get me where I need to go, but I'm going to try it and see what develops. You might, it might turn out that, you know what, you know, I keep going with this and then it sort of, you know, it doesn't get anywhere. But maybe I kind of look at my process and I think, oh, you know what, maybe instead, if I go like this, then I have my answer. So yes, you're not necessarily going in one, you know, kind of one smooth go, but that process of figuring out what your steps are can help you kind of branch out into another thought process. So write things down, focus on the next step, use the choices, that's going to get you the best chances at answering these questions. I mean, beyond also, you got to know the math. Sometimes the problem is you don't know a math concept or a formula, something that you need to learn. And also, as always with everything, repetition. The more word problems you do, you see the same patterns, the same question types again and again and again. Nothing uh, mysterious about it. 